Godzilla Redacted Document style opening credits. Wow, only a year after Godzilla destroyed Manhattan. The sheer scale of the skeleton and the trail reveal are great suspense builders. Foreshadow Toys. Foreshadow Banner. With all due respect, Takashi, and honor, respect and honor. Brian Cranston is always, 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 always a win. Brian Cranston in Japan is just the best win of all, no matter how disgracefully short his role is. We're turning back! It's not too often the characters make the right decision to run right away. Unfortunately, they're still punished for it. No, you have to close the door! Self sacrifice. <laughs> Dying on the other side of the door, banging on the glass cliche dodge. Oops, never mind. But still, Brian Cranston, everyone. San Francisco, what? Where are we? Hugging. It's not the end of the world. Well. Tokyo, New Zealand? How am I supposed to remember random cities all over the world? Brian Cranston isn't my dad in this scene. Wait. All explosive ordnance disposal. And I'm thinking he's gonna be the only man for the job. Is that you're hiding something out there? My wife died here! Something killed my wife! And I have a right to know! I don't blame them for putting this in the trailer. Lots of people were sold in the movie because they were fiending for more Heisenberg after Breaking Bad ended. And this is one of the many moments that proves he should have been the main character. <laughs> That's an entrance! This film constantly puts the action off screen or out of focus, and it's great for building anticipation. Alright, I'll admit that's not exactly what I thought you were hiding. The CGI and lighting make the Muto so realistic looking. A thoroughly terrifying scene. I'm here to inform you that we are now taking over operational authority from Monarch. Oh, America. Always there to help. Screw you, movie! Oh, yeah. Do I have a need to explain? But your father did. He predicted it. What else did he say? I didn't listen. And that's why you had to kill him? So he wouldn't shorten the runtime of this movie by knowing too much? Ugh. Fair enough. Can't we at least get a Force Ghost Walter White later on? I'm gonna bring him back! Good Samaritan win. Hey, here's a giant monster eating nuclear warheads, cuz why not? Sick EMP blast. Dare I say it better than Sauron being destroyed in the opening of Fellowship? Ken Watanabe never stops looking haggard in this movie. Talk about method acting. Oh, so sweet. Also, very nice of Godzilla not to capsize any of the ships. People often criticize films for having the action in the movie follow our main characters with no real reason. But the events need to take place somewhere. I've always thought of it more as we're being shown the person who is unlucky enough to be in the path of the action. Some people are really just this unlucky. Also, it would be boring to watch Ford sitting on the couch with his family watching the events of this movie unfold. Holy awesome reveal. Now that's an entrance. People complained about this, but if we were given all the action right up front, we'd be so monster fatigued by the end we wouldn't care. Where we put all the nuclear waste. Is that a Vegas joke? Yeah, I guess that's a Vegas joke. This is now the fourth aftermath destruction shot we've been given without seeing the actual destruction. That's bold. And I love it. And again with the serious action happening off screen. You're prepping for full analog retrofit. Is my jaw supposed to drop? Haha, ha, you're not the hero of my movie. <laughs> Is this what the news would do if monsters really started attacking? Make a little animated version to help with the PSAs? Man, they use a lot of these great shots in the trailer. Millions of lives at risk. I'm sure there was a huge temptation to make the Admiral a secondary Joe Army villain. But they didn't. He's just a guy doing his job, genuinely concerned with preventing human casualties. This freaking sound design is amazing. Utterly terrifying. You don't recover from something like this. Finally, a jet pilot ejects before blowing up. Another Muto flexing scene. What? You think I can't throw an aircraft carrier around like a chew toy? My nuke! Again, as uncomfortable as giant monsters mating makes me, the sound design is phenomenal. Get the bomb to the pier onto a boat as far away from the city as possible before it detonates. Plan B is self-sacrifice. Let them fight. Ken Watanabe doesn't even care. And somehow that's still the best line in this film. I can't
can't honestly say I wouldn't be super tempted to stand there and watch this epicness go down. But yeah, run away, do the logical thing or whatever. Again with the cutaway. At this point, the anticipation is about to explode. And that's a good thing. It makes the last fight that much more epic. Last time I'll reference the trailer, but this is another example of an amazing set piece that did not disappoint. The slowly building choral voices, the descent that was ripped right out of Zack Snyder's dreams. Just, holy crap. You don't expect this much beauty in a monster movie. Just so elegant and understated. All right, I take back what I said earlier. I'd rather be sitting at home watching this on my TV. Nope, I'm out. See you guys, good luck. The cuts back and forth between monsters and humans is done perfectly. It gives the whole fight a first person feel rather than third person. Not only did he stop the terrible spawn from being born, he also distracts them both long enough to keep them from killing Godzilla. Did he just charge that blue fire laser breath up through his tail? I know, right? You know how they say if you're on the tracks when you see the train coming, it's too late to get off? I think that logic probably applies here. Emotive Godzilla. Talk to the tail. What? What happened? I passed out. What did I miss? I, can't, I just... I can't... I can't even... They made Godzilla cool. Hugging. And some love. Is this like the monster's version of a walk of shame? Oh, what did I do last night? Who are all these people? Where am I? This is also a great ending to this film. No, we can rebuild, recap, or anything else. I know a lot of people felt like they didn't get enough Godzilla, but he was still the star. I like that they end on him. So they didn't go full alien in terms of not showing us the monsters, but they contained themselves all movie from really giving us those money shot battles. And as I said throughout, this only built anticipation for me and made the final showdown all that more epic. Plus, they created this feeling that what was happening with the monsters would play out the same way whether there were humans around or not. Except for when Ford kills the Muto babies, but she was quickly distracted. It just set a completely different tone from the 98 Godzilla. And I'll admit that it wasn't the most compelling human drama, but it did the trick. And while Pacific Rim proved that we'd all watch giants fight for two hours, the feel of this film has so much more going for it. Godzilla especially felt bigger and more powerful than any movie monster we've ever seen. His first entrance at the airport is awe-inspiring. I'm not a huge Godzilla geek, so I can't speak to how faithful this adaptation was to previous incarnations, but I've read some complaints. I will say, as a general audience member, I loved it. That being said, I'm a huge original series Star Trek fan, and I still really like the 2009 reboot. Was it Star Trek? Eh, not really. Was this Godzilla? Maybe not? But it was a good movie with amazing CGI and human characters that weren't completely flat. I look forward to the sequel. Apparently we're going to get some more recognizable monsters next time around like Mothra. And then a Godzilla vs. King Kong might be happening. I see no reason why the Jaegers can't fight alongside Godzilla. Give them a little antenna receiver so they can coordinate. I mean, who wouldn't want to drift with Godzilla? Although, if watching his atomic breath made me pass out, actually experiencing it might make my head explode. Worth the risk.